Inc. Presented by Lowe's. Welcome to Paradise, everybody. Paradise Island, the Bahamas, and we are at the Atlantis Resort. And this is the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis. Good one today, Tennessee and Purdue as they face off against each other. And certainly when you look at the field, you could make the case. You have three teams, all of them ranked within the top 20, that are thinking about playing late into March in a Final Four. We'll see Arizona later. Villanova this afternoon as Dick Vitale will join me then. But now I got the former Purdue great Robbie Hummel with me, the Hum Baby alongside. I'm Carl Ravitch. Welcome. It's sort of our turn now. We've seen some great tournaments. And in this one, you have a Purdue team from Matt Painter. They've been in the Sweet 16 before. They feel like they can get to the next step. How do they do it? Yeah, this is a proving ground game for them. And it's a chance to show on the national level that they can contend and be one of those teams that gets to a, a Final Four level. But really, it's going to have to be Carson Edwards. He's a guy He's averaging 18 and a half points a game. Explosive guard. He can go for 30 at any time. If Purdue's going to be that team, he needs to be a guy that scores the basketball. Think about Yogi Ferrell, the role he played, a facilitator and a scorer. And that's kind of what they expect to get from Carson Edwards. As we take a look at today's starting lineups, they're brought to you by Atlantis. Tennessee's a lot deeper than they've been, and that is something that they're going to need as far as having success, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a big tournament for them. They're trying to be a team that gets back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in Rick Barnes' tenure, and if they're going to do it, Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams have to be dominant on the inside. They got a couple of seven-footers to Purdue. One of them starts, and you're looking at him there, and he got out-jumped. That's Isaac Haas, number 44, so Tennessee controls. Jordan Bone is their point guard. He handles the ball to start. And Kyle Alexander doing battle down low. And the first shot is Admiral Schofield. That one is off, but an offensive rebound for Tennessee. Interesting matchup here early to start the game. You have the physicality of Schofield and Grant Williams going up against the skill of Dakota Mathias and Vincent Edwards. Challenging the seven-footer, the fadeaway misses, and Haas pulls down the rebound. Two pretty good defensive possessions there for Purdue, forcing Tennessee into jump shots. They want to get to that rim. Haas Edwards, three ball. There's your guy. What a start for Carson Edwards. Well, he's not bashful, and you get that ball on the inside to Isaac Haas. Great job of seeing the defense and kicking it back out to his guard, who knocks down the open three. Ideally, we'll see Tennessee press a lot more this season. They really love the way South Carolina played last year. They want to kind of emulate some of that. Fade away, baseline shot, no good. And how about another offensive rebound? Lost, and now it's Purdue's ball. Matthias got his man in the air, down low to Haas. That's too deep. Well, he, you know, he did his work early. He buried his guy right at the rim, and when you let him at 7-2 get that close to the basket, he's simple, he scores the basketball. Tennessee has to do a better job of pushing him out and making him work for his baskets. Early 5-0 advantage for the Boilermakers, who won the Big Ten last year. Bone pull up too hard. That one is tipped in by Haas, actually. So 5-2 early will give Alexander the bucket, even though it was Haas who tipped it in. And here's some of that full-court pressure. Not really designed to turn you over, just to make it more difficult. They're trying to wear you out. They're trying to take time off the shot clock. It is tough for a point guard when he has to face constant pressure all game. Purdue going to run that motion offense. They're so good at it. Matt Painter's so good at teaching it. Edwards with a man in his face. That was a little long. Haas threw Alexander to the ground, and then they get that on Haas. Kyle Alexander doing a great job of blocking Isaac Haas out. I think we're going to see Matt Harm sub in early for Haas here. It's the luxury the Boilermakers have. They can bring in two guys seven foot tall. Actually, seven foot two and seven foot three. Probably Matty. only Arizona a team that can match yeah. that. And we'll see Arizona later. You see Matt Painter there on the sideline. This is the seventh time that a team has been 4-0. They got a good win. They got a win at Marquette on the road early. So they're getting tested. Great cut. Really good cut. An easy lay-in to make it a one-point ball game. Great offense there by Tennessee. Good screen. Jordan Bowden reads it, gets to the rim. Good basketball there by the Volunteers. Bowden off to a good start scoring this season. Tennessee a lot more athletic, perhaps, than Purdue. And that's really ultimately what we'll see, a matchup of the strength and size of Purdue against the athleticism of Tennessee. Tennessee shot the ball well, Carl. Now they're eighth in the country in three-point shooting. Alexander took it right away from Matthias. Tennessee pushes. 
And Bone on the ground, and he is tied up. And the possession arrow goes to Purdue. So you got two quality coaches who have been around a long time. This is the third season at Tennessee for Rick Barnes, but he's coached for three decades. <laughs> he's been around a long time. He's been around a while. And he really likes the depth of the team that he's got this season. This would be a good test for them early against a team like Purdue. You talk about depth, Carl. He's able to bring in James Daniels, the, James Daniels the third, and Lamonte Turner, who both can play the point. And you're seeing some of that pressure defense. They get the foul on the play, but again, that's what Tennessee wants to do. They lost to South Carolina by 27 last season, and they said from the get-go, South Carolina kicked our butts all game long. They want to be that type of team. And they have the athletes to be that kind of team. Yeah. We saw it in pregame, the warm-ups. I mean, it was a dunk contest going <laughs> through their line. They are not short on athletes. And, you, you know, when you have that, you can get out and pressure the basketball. It just speeds teams up, gets them out of their comfort zone. It's a luxury to have. Daniel gets the foul called against him. Vince Edwards, he launches a long three and gets the bottom of the net. So a couple of early threes from Vince Edwards and Carson Edwards. And Purdue's got an 8-4 advantage. Purdue is 3 of 4 from the floor. Got to call a hook offensive foul. It looked like they got that on James Daniel. We mentioned that matchup here coming into this game. Grant Williams having to guard Vincent Edwards and Vincent Edwards having to guard Grant Williams. And so far, if Vince Edwards is going to make shots like that on the perimeter, it's going to be really hard for him to defend him. Foul was ultimately on Williams. He's out of the game. So Purdue for the four-point game. And the ball. And Edwards all the way to the hole. He gets it to go. What a start for Carson Edwards. Well, just a blur in the, in the, the front court there for Carson Edwards. Wasting no time getting into offense. He's that kind of player. At any time he can score, Carl. John Fulkerson, number 10, has come into the game. Three-point shot corner. Turner, that's good. Just a great screen there by John Fulkerson. And Lamonte Turner reads it perfectly, just fades to the corner, and knocks down the open three. Back the other way. Edwards misses. Alexander the rebound. Here comes the orange. The pace favor either one of these teams? You no, know, I think it's what Tennessee wants to play at, but so far Purdue matching their intensity as we see Kyle Alexander get the lay in there. But Purdue's a team that they, they can play fast too. And Isaac Hoss is not in the game right now. Matt Harms more mobile. He can get up and down the floor. A guy like Carson Edwards, Dakota Mathias, they can get out on the open, open court as well. One of the early storylines too, Robbie. Three offensive rebounds for Tennessee. And they're doing a good job on both ends. Here's a loose ball. Good pass to Edwards, launches a contested three, it's off, and that one is going to go out of bounds. Boy, I thought everything was a little laid back and slower in the Bahamas. Not the way this game has started. 19 points already. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Classic American muscle. Mow with an attitude, Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at heart, and New York life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. Welcome back, everyone. Atlantis, that's where we are. And, uh, yeah, Robbie Hummel is huge here. I didn't realize <laughs> that you are. No, it's not necessarily the Bahamas you're huge in. It's the fact that we got a lot of black and gold. Let's talk about the benefits, because you've played in tournaments like this. Right. What are the keys and the success and what you're hoping to accomplish? Well, I mean, you're getting, to, you're getting to test yourself against the best teams in the country. And obviously, this is a great field. There's a lot of good teams here, no Arizona, doubt. Villanova, Purdue. Tennessee, you know, has, has shown early that they're maybe a team that can be reckoned with this year. So I think you get a chance to just see where you're at. But at the same time, as a team, you're in a place that, you know, you may never get to go back to in your life. So you get to see a place like the Atlantis. Um, you get to be in the Caribbean. It's it's a cool experience. You get to do some. You know, I remember when I was down in St. Thomas, we got to do a scuba diving and boat excursion that was pretty cool. There's just a lot of things that you get to to accomplish and see down here in these tournaments. And a couple of substitutions and one significant one. Eve Pons, who has the ball right now, 35. He's from France. He's been dealing with a bad ankle. Had a bad ankle last year, and he's actually been dealing with a bad ankle so far this season, and there was some question whether he was even going to play. Yeah, I think Coach Barnes kind of intimated at shoot-around that he wasn't even sure. They were talking about maybe shutting him down, but 
Apparently that ankle is responded, but you look at him. I mean, he is just made in the way. He might live in the weight room, actually, Carl. <laughs> he may be also uh, the best athlete that Barnes has had here at Tennessee in his three years. Edwards, that one is blocked, but Barnes is there for the rebound. And that's one thing they want to see from the kid from the Netherlands, Matt Harms at 7-3. More sort of power to a finesse game, which he already has. Sure, I mean, his skill set is very unique. And, you know, at 7-3, he can put the ball on the, on the floor and he can shoot the basketball. But they're just following up, making a nice play there of cleaning up Vincent Edwards' miss. Alante Turner gets the high screen, stops for a three. And that one is going to go and be against Tennessee. Hey, of course, the tournaments have already started, but Feast Week continues. The championship from the Maui Invitational. If you haven't seen Landry Shamit play for Wichita State, they had a battle earlier in this tournament, was able to survive. He's been ter terrific. And Bonzi Colson, two NBA prospects no on doubt. the floor tonight. Well, Mike Bray has done a great job with this Notre Dame program, and Bonzi Colson, one of the best players in the country, a double-double threat every night. He's going to be a force there in South Bend. Bonzi Colson is like on the year nine project. He was like Hummel at <laughs> Purdue. We never could get rid of Hummel. Why leave? He was there. Here's a three. And this is a team that has been led by their seniors so far this season. Their outside shooting has been outstanding, and they knocked down another three. And that's what they've done all season, shooting the basketball at a ridiculously high rate. P.J. Thompson shooting 55% of the season. That one is uncontrollable. It goes out of bounds. A little too much mustard on that pass from Derek Walker. And a fourth turnover as Darrington had that go off his hands. Chris Darrington. Tennessee will go 10-11 deep yeah. right now. I mean, this is definitely a very deep basketball team. And Derek Walker, a guy that this summer was great in their, in their foreign trip. Kind of been derailed here by a concussion. Trying to get back into the swing of things here for the Volunteers. Edwards, no harms. And Tennessee controls it. For a team that's got two seven-footers, Rob, it does surprise you a little bit that they are so dependent on what appears, at least so far, to be on the outside shot. Yeah, they haven't really gotten the ball inside. I think Tennessee doing a very good job of not get, letting them get easy post touches, aside from the one that Isaac Haas got right at the rim. The one to the hoop over Harms. No, they got a foul on number 32. He didn't like it. Mike but Roberts, Darren George, and Clarence Armstrong the officials today. Well, that's what Jordan Bone is known for, and that's what he needs to do. He's got the ability to get to the rim at any time extremely fast. And you see Matt Harms does get him on the arm right there. So Jordan Bone going to go to the line and try to knock down two. And we're going to have three substitutes come in for Purdue. So Harms, you can almost see, got poked in the eye. He gave him a good roll right there. The first free throw is missed. He comes out of the game as... Isaac Haas, the seven-footer, comes back in. Edwards and Thompson join him on the bench. No gel Eastern, number 20 into the game. They love his athleticism. A freshman guard, a six-foot, six, 220-pounder out of Evanston, Illinois. He's a guy that can really pass, Carl. He's just got great vision for his size. A unique combination for a guard, especially at the college level. He's going to have to deal with some pressure here tonight, though, because Tennessee is going to go right after him. Yep. Ryan Klein also into the game for Purdue. Edwards, that's a travel. Got a turnover for Purdue. So you're four games in for Purdue. You're just a couple of games in for Tennessee. You're this deep with 8, 10, 11 guys coming in. When do you start to cut it down to about 8, right. 9? Well, I mean, in these tournaments, depth is important. You're playing three games in three days. Good so I, I think it's it's not the time for that now. But by the, as, as the season progresses, you get farther into conference play. It's really important to kind of narrow that rotation down. You're going to see teams go to an eight- or nine-man rotation because there's just not enough minutes to go around. Yeah, Tennessee's already played 11 guys. So Rick Barnes has been substituting often. Want to improve their ball screen defense on offense. They want to get down the floor. As they said, they got 10 or 11 guys that could start, let alone play. But 10 or 11 that could start. Blocked and down hard on the ground, but back up. Boy, that was a physical play, as you saw the seven-footer knock that ball away. And Darrington hit the ground hard here. 
Well, it's a grown man's game in this paint for both teams. And Isaac Haas going up and denying Chris Darrington. Admiral Schofield way short. That's an air ball. And it'll be a Purdue ball. You know, for him, I want to see Admiral Sch Schofield go down on the block. I think with, with his physicality, he's got Vincent Edwards, he's got Dakota Mathias guarding him. He's a guy that can go down there and punish them. And, you know, he's a, he's shot the three-point uh, yeah. three as well this year. But you, know, you want it to be in the offense. That's a shot that's not in the flow of the offense. And I think he just needs to go down there, get a bucket, get himself going. He was only one second on that shot clock when he fired it up. Klein, his first shot no good. Tipped at the rim. It doesn't go in. Tennessee will push it with Bone. Great, Great pass. pass. And a bucket. There's Schofield down low, and he gets it to go. Jordan Bone showing right there that he can get going in transition. The point guard doing a little bit of everything here. The, the Volunteers fighting back with Purdue. And the Admiral here at Atlantis getting it to go. Welcome back, everyone. Boiler up. That's... Uh, what Purdue did yesterday, kind of a relaxing day. They had an hour shoot around. They got a chance to experience all that is Atlantis. And that's the big fella going down what they call the leap of faith. It's a tube that just goes straight down like that. Lee's gone. A lot of displaced water right there, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> that is a water displacement. <laughs> Woo! Well, Isaac Haas, all the eight teams enjoying it. Let's talk about Tennessee's ability to penetrate here and get an easy bucket. Yeah, Jordan Bone doing a great job in transition, and that is what he is known for. Reading the defense, Dakota Mathias commits. Admiral Schofield at the rim for an and one. Tennessee, a team that can get it going in transition in a hurry. Maybe not the half-court team that Rick Barnes would like them to be right now, but when you can get yourself going with an easy one, this is great for Admiral Schofield. He's, got, he's had some tough looks, yep. missed some shots here early in the game, gets a layup. Now he gets to shoot a free throw, gets to see the ball go in the basket. We'll see if that makes a difference for him coming out of this timeout. Trying to replace some of the productivity that Robert Hubbs took with him yes. when he left. He was a 14-point-a-game guy. Schofield will play inside and outside. So a good start, 15-13, under 12 to go here. The Battle for Atlantis, eight-team tournament. They get it down low to the big fella, and he throws it hard off the backboard. Perhaps still reeling from the leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Kyle Alexander's defense there, that length affecting Isaac Haas' shot. Ball to a 500 team last year, and I mentioned Hubs, who's now gone, led the team a little deeper this year. A three-pointer in and out from Bone. Haas had it and lost it. And now battle on the floor, and it's Purdue ball. Line, good pass, good look. Yeah, two men up in the air. That opened up a three and in and out. That one off the rim for Dakota Mathias. That's a shot that Matt Painter will certainly live with. Mathias shooting 80% from three to start the season. A ridiculous clip for him. Wide open. Buries that one. Dakota Mathias. He was 13 of 16 from three-point land this season. We'll take a 30-second timeout with Purdue up by five. This is <laughs> Do on that last possession. Doing a very good job on the pick and roll. We're going to take a look here. Dakota Mathias running the floor, getting to the corner. Vincent Edwards bringing the basketball up. Take a look. Isaac Haas trails in here for the ball screen. Look at Dakota Mathias' defender. Admiral Schofield sucked into the paint. Mathias with the three. Great offense for the Boilermakers early. They made more threes than twos. Oh, there you go. Admiral Schofield steps out. He knocks down a three. Rick Barnes probably saw what you did. He told his team in that quick timeout, let's try to avoid that. They come back after that timeout with their three of their own. A lot of long range shooting in this game. Edwards fade away, tough shot. And he comes up short. Good hustle, but uh, did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. 
B.J. Thompson had it for a second. Tennessee is doing a much better job in the last four or five minutes contesting these jump shots. You know, these have not been open looks for Carson Edwards. He started the game, defense was a little lax, but they've really stepped it up. They've gotten kind of into Purdue, and they've done a good job defensively making it tough on him on the offensive end. Admiral Schofield's got the last six for Tennessee, the son of a Navy man. That's why you get the first name Admiral. He's got a brother who's also named General. <laughs> Here's Admiral with the ball. He's got seven offensive rebounds. You asked Mass Painter yesterday. They seem to have just about everything you want. They have seniors, they have good experience, they can shoot, they got inside. So what's sure. the Christmas? What's the wish list? He said rebounding. Yeah, and that's been defensive. kind of an issue. They they saw it in their first game against Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Rebounding the basketball is sometimes an issue for this team. And I see while they're doing great on the offensive glass, they turned it over six times. I think back to Purdue's rebounding, you know, you, you say, how can they struggle at rebounding? They've got a 7-3 guy, they've got a 7-2 guy. And, you know, Isaac Haas doesn't always rebound outside of his area. It's, it's tough for him to move his feet. He's a big guy. Yeah, and so, they have just seen it there. It, yeah, and I, and I think sometimes it's hard for him to go get balls and chase balls down that are away from him. So you look at a team like Purdue, Vincent Edwards, the guards, they have to be, be guys that are crashing into the glass and helping the big rebound the basketball. Harms sprints to the scorer's table. Haas will go out. He's Harms excited to get back that game. in. And Harms, who didn't take that uh, finger to that eye, and you can see he's starting to develop a little shiner underneath yeah. that right eye is. 24, Brady Eifert on the floor for Purdue as well, and he's going to get called for a foul guarding Williams. Eifert, uh, familiar last name, of course, his brother Tyler, now in the NFL. His dad played at Purdue. It's a pretty athletic family right there. For a team foul on Purdue. And they'll try to isolate Eifert down low. No good in the rebound for the Boilermakers. Smaller lineup on the floor for them now. Edwards got it to go. What body strength from Carson Edwards. Well, he's built like a football player, Carl, and you saw that. In space, he is so good. Gets ahead of steam, beats Jordan Bone off the dribble, but he just hangs in the air. Tough shot. And Carson Edwards with the chance to make this an and one. He's always in attack mode. Always looking to score the basketball. Seven points. You can see a 74% free throw shooter. He does have that scorer's mentality. Right. And he's a guy. He could miss 10 shots, and he fully believes that number 11 is going in. And that's a skill because not everybody is built like that. <laughs> but those that are, they're, they they have it, and they're no watching. Doubt. And they they will. They're always like that. <laughs> always I like wish that. I would have been. It was you know you miss a couple sometimes it, it can waver your confidence. He is not that guy. Last meeting between Tennessee and Purdue was at that Paradise Jam in 2009. You remember that game? Yeah, Etwan Moore, MVP of the tournament. Great game. I mean, Tennessee was really good. Tyler Smith, Wayne Chisholm. You guys beat him 73-72, and the Humbaby had 20 in that game. <laughs> they, had a, they had a shot to win it at the end, and we were lucky that they missed. Tough shot there. The defense has been ratcheted up a little bit by Purdue. They got a five-point lead. Edwards. Ooh. Nifty little crossover to open himself up for the three, but he couldn't get it to go. Bowden, he launches. Another offensive rebound, Turner's three. That's off. And it'll go which way? It's going to go to Purdue. Tennessee doing a good job on the offensive boards. They are battling. However, they are two for the last 13. See Robbie Hummel in a uniform, actually playing ball when we come back. before HD 2009 the Paradise Jam <laughs> Robbie Hummel working the baseline little floater 20 points at seven boards that game is it all coming back to you? seven of 16 Ugh. not one of my better shooting nights but no it, it was a great game I mean they they were a really good team and we had a really good team too but you know you look at our squad Etwan Moore Juwan Johnson it was really fun a great group to play with and uh, yeah I look back on that fondly for sure all right, so, so compare, because you get a lot of guys that are going to jump to the NBA after maybe their freshman year. You were there for five years. You played professionally. You played overseas. 
Were the college years the best years? Yeah, they were the most fun. I mean, I think you look at playing as a pro, it's a business, and I think it's, it's tough to understand. And actually, you know, when I was a fifth year, I wasn't playing great. Brian Cardinal came back. Um, you know, the former Purdue player, yep. he just won a championship with the Mavericks. And he told me, because I wasn't shooting the ball very well, and I was having, a, I was kind of struggling. Our team wasn't as good. And he told me, hey, man, you, you got to enjoy this, because college basketball, you're playing with your friends. It's the most fun you're ever going to have. And I was like, Brian, you just won a championship with the Mavericks, please. <laughs> but he was right. You know, you're, you're with these guys every day. You're at tournaments like this. It's, it's a great experience. Well, we're happy to have you. I'm glad to be here. Matthias misses a three as we're under the eight-minute mark here. First half, battle for Atlantis and the Maui Invitational. Of course, also going on right now in the championship game later tonight. Should be a good one. Wichita State and Notre Dame, 10 Eastern time on ESPN2. We'll see Villanova later. And over on ESPN3 later this evening, too. Arizona, my goodness, are they athletic. Oh, oh yes. my goodness. And skill. They, you know, they are an elite team in college basketball this season. And you talk about Arizona, you talk about at least from the Bahamas as well. DeAndre Ayton is a physical specimen. Yes, if you haven't is. seen him play yet, he's like a gymnast who plays basketball. I mean, and literally that seven two flexible 7-2 gymnast. Western Kentucky takes on Villanova after we're done with the first game right around 2 o'clock Eastern time. Northern Iowa brings back 11 of their 12 from last year. They're really deep. And SMU's got Shake Milton all game stream live on the ESPN app as well. We'll play on Thanksgiving and end it on Friday. There's DeAndre Ayton and NASA Bahamas 18 and 11 and you just get the sense if he wanted to that, that could be a lot higher. Well I think you're looking at it he's he's playing with Alonzo True who's averaging 30 a game 30. so I we, we asked Sean Miller yesterday you know how do they play together do they feel like it's good for him you know do they like it do they not like it and he said both these guys are mature enough to understand that they make life so much easier on the other one so you look at that Arizona team, they can play a lot of ways. You know, they can play fast, ways. they can play out of the post, they can, you know, they can do do it all pretty much. And I think you're going to see they're, they're one of the elite teams in college basketball this season. I mean, you ask Sean about athletes that he's recruited, and Arizona's recruited some athletes. Yeah, and we talked about that yesterday, too. And he said Aiton is the best. It's not, especially as far as his development at such a young age. Yeah, and think about the pros that have left early from that program. You're talking about Andre Iguodala and, you know. Uh, Bibby left early. Yeah, Mike Bibby. And you know, there's so many guys. Gilbert Arenas, just guys that were stud pros, good athletes. And DeAndre Aiden, he said, is the best he's had. And Arizona is that. <laughs> you can put together an NBA All-Star team with the guys that have, have played basketball there. Right. Six fouls on Tennessee. They're going to get Matthias there with the foul as well. As we're beginning this college basketball season, and Matthias picks up his first. Any of the rule changes, and they're they're not major, they're minor, right. but there's certainly some changes here that affect the way yeah. the game is played. You know, I think just the freedom of movement aspect yeah. of it. And, but in watching the game, it doesn't appear to me like it's been called much differently. Now they say that there's a cylinder, there's a cylinder that that surrounds each player, and yep. if you crowd them and they bump into you pretty much, that's the freedom of movement. You, it's going to be a defensive foul. It's going to be a block. So they, they say they're officiating it differently, but to me it, it has appeared the same. Not a good offensive trip there for Tennessee, and they are 0 for their last 8. We're going to get a block on the defensive side that time. On Daniel. The Tennessee bench, I think, thought that he was set. Yeah. Now he's still moving point though again with the whole cylinder freedom movement it's designed for the offensive players right. like I, the NFL yes. you know, we're designing things to improve yeah. the offense well, they're trying to increase scoring and they're right. trying to, 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 to decrease the physicality of the game and just in seeing the way it's called I as a former player I think I might fall out in five minutes sometimes with the way they officiate it now but it, you know I think as these officials get into conference play Sometimes these rule changes do kind of fade out. You don't see them True. as prevalent. You know, at the start of the season, they're called so much tighter, and you kind of get back to the way things were conference as conference play, play yeah. comes. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like this year. But, yeah, the freedom of movement is, is a huge thing in college basketball. They, they certainly want the offense to be aggressive. Carson Edwards has 10, and Admiral Schofield what misses. Wow, what a rebound. You're not kidding. Out of nowhere came the... Leaping Lamonte Turner. And he's given up some inches to some of the other guys that were trying to get that ball. 
But Tennessee did a, a good job on that last possession of getting Admiral Schofield in open three, a little pick and pop action. It's an interesting approach with Schofield, given, as you said, his size, as there's five on the shot clock, that they would rather have him almost be an outside player than an inside player. Another offensive rebound lost there by Alexander. They still battle for it, and Purdue will try to push with Edwards. Swing it to Matthias, the extra pass, and it was a good one. That three is good. P.J. Thompson from the corner. Right there, Carl. That is absolutely big-time basketball played by the Purdue Boilermakers. Vincent Edwards advances the ball. Get a little swing-swing. Dakota Matthias finding his point guard. That's textbook. Advance pass. Carson Edwards finds a, a trailing Dakota Matthias, making the extra pass. There's so many shooters on this Purdue basketball team. And you run at one, and you're leaving another guy that right now is probably shooting in the 40s or the 50 percentile range. They've been on a 9-0 run here in the last five minutes. We talked about it. This, this is an interesting venue. This isn't a typical stadium for these, these guys to play in. It's a, it's, a, it's a short roof. It's a ballroom that they've transformed into a basketball court. And you mentioned it for people at home watching, wondering, like, how close is that basketball coming to the ceiling when they shoot it? It's a 26 feet to the ceiling, from floor to ceiling. No full court shots this game. No, you're going to, unless you're shooting a line drive, it's going in. <laughs> no arc. And the lighting's a little different, but they were all in here yesterday, and we've seen, obviously, they, they can make shots. It's right. not that big a distraction. Tennessee needs to get something going to the rim here, Carl. They did, and how about that? Draw me. Foul on Harms, and that was one of those. We talked about the new rules. Now, he was running with him, which I get, but clearly the offensive player created the contact. Yeah, he did, and, and Lamonte Turner embracing the physicality of the game. Gets the contact. That's, that's, that's a, a close one under the new rules. That's by the, by the offense. But what a strong drive. Lamonte Turner, how about the offensive rebound no. he grabbed? Man, he was up there. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of known as a three-point shooter, but he never got that one. Redshirt freshman last year. The thing Rick Barnes wants he and the other guards to do was to rebound a little more. And I think Turner, at least early on here, we've seen him buy into that big time. They don't have great size, but they do have great length and great athletes. Haas back into the game. Harms for that foul goes to the bench. Edwards, that's long, and Turner picks up the rebound. So Lamonte Turner, offensive and defensive rebounds. That's illegal. Yep. On Kyle Alexander out top trying to set a screen on Thompson. Tennessee struggling offensively here early. Got 10 offensive rebounds, but. Only four second, ha second chance points. An area they certainly feel like they can score the basketball in. Unable to finish over Purdue's length, though. Seven turnovers. Once again, Edwards. This time the ball fake. He drives, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Edwards. Lamonte Turner has, has really kind of been the spark here for Tennessee. Doing it on the offensive end, the defensive end. He's rebounded. He has had a good first half of basketball. Eifert and Klein re-enter the game. Both Vincent and Carson Edwards come out. 20 seconds until the uh, four-minute mark. So you get a break, so you get an extra rest while you come out before that commercial break. Tennessee's gone cold. They've got three points in their last six minutes. Now they got six as Turner drains it. And Lamonte Turner's having a nice couple of minutes here. Yeah, you feel like he's kind of the guy that's keeping Tennessee in this game right now. Knocks down what he's known for. He's got nine. Good Great help pass. defense. Really good pass. The cutter was Eifert. And he lays it up and lays it in. And the lead grows to seven. Well, Dakota Mathias finding a cutting Grady Eifert. And how about this statistic? Since last season, he is coming into this game 19 of 22 from the field. 86%. The beneficiary there of a great Dakota Mathias pass. 19 of 22. That's impossible. 
It's a video game right there. Do you pass it when there's a man? When, even when you have an open shot and you're not feeling good, you just get rid of it? Like, I got to keep my percentage up. Got to keep those numbers up. Good move there. It's big Isaac Haas used the rim as a protector for himself. You now, Carlin, he's on balance and he takes his time. He is a really, really good scorer for this Purdue team. It's when he tries to do things that maybe he's not as good at. He keeps it simple, just like he did there. He scores the ball, and he's an effective weapon for this Purdue team. Long three. How about Lamonte Turner? Well, he's got it going. And I think right now he's he's got to be a guy right now that carries Tennessee because offensively they have struggled. But they find themselves down six. I think if you're Rick Barnes, you absolutely take where you're at right now. they got to finish this half strong in the last three minutes. Lamonte Turner's got the last nine and a dozen in the game. And the 230 mark, a chance to get it below six. A little pick and roll action for Turner would be just what Tennessee could order up right here. Great cut. Ah, oh, he missed him. Good look to Alexander, and he gets it to roll over the front of the rim. How about the catch? I mean, good pass, but Alexander certainly agile there. Matt Painter not pleased with what he sees. 31-27, we take a timeout and a halftime report coming up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is... Who is our sponsor on the halftime Paradise report? Island. This, uh, the Wilbur at heart. And Lowe. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Yeah, <laughs> Spatola listening too to the telecast. He's the Navy son, that uh, Admiral and the General, son of a Navy man. Looking forward to the Land Rover halftime report and an early happy Thanksgiving to Adnan and the crew there. We got 2:15 left. Good pressure from Tennessee on the inbounds and a near turnover. Hasn't been a characteristically played game by Purdue. Seven assist five turnovers remember they came in with a 54 to 9 number on the season right they've been so good tennessee's had a little bit to do with that that's, that's there's no question no there they've, they've pressured they've been in the passing lanes and they've made it tough for these boilermakers shot clock at five edwards goes to the baseline a lot of traffic there he loses it tennessee hit the ball on the ground that's a shot clock violation good defense Great by defense. the volunteers there was just nowhere for him to go. Drives the baseline. Tennessee. Textbook defense sliding over, shutting down that driving lane. Great baseline help and recover there by the Volunteers. And Purdue, you know, they're struggling here. Yeah. They have not scored the ball in the half court at all, really. It's been in transition. It's it's been it's been tough on them. Tennessee doing a good job. You mentioned Carson Edwards at the top. He's three of eight from the floor, one of four from three. Both these teams have Launched combined 25 three-pointers. They've made only nine. Sure, they're getting them up. That's kind of the age of basketball we are in. Some people say, is it the Warriors? Have they changed the game, kind of? And I have to think that's yes. Oh, now will come up short. He made a nice move to free himself. That's off the foot, though, of Edwards, and it will stay Tennessee ball. Really, you think the influence of the Warriors? I just think just the way they play. I think whether it's an whether it's an NBA setting, I think in a college setting, I think the three-point shot is is more valuable today than ever. And I think we've seen that. And it seems like, you know, right now if you, if you're a kid growing up, it's cool to shoot threes. It used to be cool to dunk. Now it's, you know, it's cool to be, be shooting Steph Curry like threes and, and playing that way. And it doesn't matter obviously what size you are. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, look at look at the the big man we have now, the Joel Embiid's or you, we said DeAndre Ayton yesterday. This guy can he's 7 7 foot 2 and he's he's able to shoot three pointers and he can dribble. He's skilled. Right. That's kind of the new age 7 footer that we see now. 5 on the shot clock, 3 on the shot clock. It gets off and it drops. Good shot there by Chris Darrington late at the buzzer as we are at the 35 second mark with a two-point lead for Purdue. You know, he hasn't gotten going offensively yet, but he's a big-time scorer coming out of Juco. And we see Purdue 
The nice struggles pass. continue and just didn't catch the basketball there. Hit him in the hands. Yeah. That's one he's got to have. Is that something you can work on as a big guy? Your hands? I mean, literally catching the ball? Now, there, you can work on it, but I think a lot of the time that's just something that you have. You know, you talk about it, a big guy. A lot of the time they have, you know, they have stone hands. That's yeah. the old saying. And yeah. I think sometimes it's just, it's hard for these guys. But Isaac, you know, he knows he should have caught that ball. Eighth turnover the first half, and we are under 20 with a differential of about three on the shot and game clock. We're going to see a Jordan Bone isolation right here. More offensive rebounding, Alexander. Oh, the cutter! Oh. The Admiral lays it in, and we'll go to break all tied up at 31. So, well, the Admiral not giving up on the play. Giving us a little bit of what we saw in that pregame warm-up. This Tennessee crowd is fired up, and they have every reason to be. Great really? pass, Kyle Alexander, Admiral Schofield. <laughs> Hello. Really good pass. A 9-0 run in the last three minutes. And it's time for the Land Rover Halftime Report. Hope you enjoy the halftime. We welcome you back to the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis. Alongside Robbie Humble, the former Purdue Boilermaker, I'm Carl Ravage. 31-31. Tennessee used 11 players. Purdue used 9. They both used runs. And for a while, it looked like Purdue was going to pull away. And then all of a sudden, Tennessee goes on a real run late. Yeah, and it was spurred by Lamonte Turner. And he got it done on the defensive end. He got it done on the offensive end. He played hard. He did everything you want out of a player. And it's, it's winning basketball. And you look at Tennessee, they missed the first 16 of their 18. Then make six of nine to finish the half. Three of those being by Lamonte Turner. He's a guy that kept them in it. And then, you know, it's just you see him getting to the rim, making shots, doing a little bit of everything here for this volunteer squad. And we knew coming in he could shoot the basketball from deep. <laughs> But it's been the total package for him. He has had a great start to this game. Last one looked like it scraped the 26-foot <laughs> feeling. <laughs> yeah, my ceiling inside the Imperial Ballroom here. As we take a look at our first half stats, they're brought to you by Atlantis. Both teams uh, not afraid to shoot the three. Tennessee's offensive rebounding, impressive part of their 23-17 advantage. Turner and Edwards, the only guys in double figures. Tennessee ends on a 15-4 run. Vincent Edwards, only one for six from the field like to see him get going if you're a Boilermaker fan right yeah I mean he, he certainly struggled and I think if you're Matt Painter you want to go where your bread is buttered you want to throw this ball into the post and that's to Isaac Haas and Vincent Edwards and get them kind of in a flow both of them a little out of it here in the first but Vincent's a guy he can get it going and Isaac too you know both those guys are more than capable of scoring the basketball I think we have a clock issue here Oh, yeah, the shot clock, shot clock stays at 30, never really moved. But I think you'll see a concerted effort from Purdue. A little cross-screen action, maybe just some straight-up post-ups because they have really settled for three-pointers, and they've shot them so well. But today they haven't fallen, and you, know, you wonder, has the roof put an impact on that? Yeah. But they have settled for some shots that aren't, aren't probably what Matt Painter wants to see. First of four games today, we'll see Villanova, Arizona later tonight. Northern Iowa SMU square off as well. Alexander, tough baseline shot, but another offensive rebound for Tennessee as the collision between Alexander and Thompson leads to a corner three for Tennessee. The hustle play there by Kyle Alexander getting Grant Williams an open look. And don't look now, but Tennessee leads by three. Matthias, that doesn't go. Haas had it, had it ripped away from him. Tennessee winning the 50-50 balls. I thought it was interesting on that first possession. You saw Tennessee go to a high-low set. Oh, that's a great cut. Just missed him. But they, no, they went high-low. You know, they're yep. trying to establish that inside game as well. Schofield this time drives. He can't get it to go, and it's a Purdue ball. Tennessee for the first time today with a three-point edge. Edwards to the hole, uses his left hand. No. Apparently Haas touched that, and we'll go to Tennessee. For a guy that's 7-3 and is as physically imposing as Haas, the idea that Tennessee is willing to take it to him, given they have another 7-footer on the bench, I'm kind of read between the lines yeah, there Yeah, no, I, I think they, they must like their matchup there. And Isaac Haas is certainly not a guy who's going to protect the rim. 
like they've had in the past. You know, they, they had A.J. Hammond, who's now with the Miami Heat. Right. He's a guy that's going to protect the rim. I think Matt Harms is more of a guy that's going to protect the rim. Isaac's more of your traditional anchor the post center. Tough baseline jumper, no good. Of course, Purdue without Caleb Swanigan, who was such a force for them last year. Just a dominant season call. I yeah. Mean. And there you go. That, right there, that's a, that's a good post-up by Isaac Haas, and he he had his man on his back, sealed him there, draws the foul, but, you know, he, he's been an incredibly efficient scorer. You look at that. He led the Big Ten in points per 40 minutes in the last two years, and I think Matt Painter has had the luxury of having all these bigs. You talk about A.J. Hammonds, Isaac Haas, Caleb Swanigan. That's a bad pass by Dakota Mathias. Isaac Haas, not a guy that you're going to throw a lob like that to. Good take by Jordan Bone. He can't get it to go, but another offensive rebound to Kyle Alexander. And Kyle Alexander coming out of that out of that halftime. He has really made a presence here. And Tennessee leads 13 to 4 on the offensive glass. Haas, they're going to go the other way, and Schofield came in and made sure he didn't put it in the basket. That'll be Haas's second, and Harms coming in. Yeah, and Matt Painter can't like what he sees from his team. Tennessee right now being the aggressor, really dominating the pace of this game. This is a good look. He does push off, but uh, Schofield, not in my house. <laughs> no. This play is over, but I'm not letting you see that ball go through the rim. A little KG action, Kevin Garnett. The Admiral. It's a great name. It's a tremendous name. That one is stolen, and was stolen back by Williams. Got himself up in the air and was able to find an outlet and the easy take by Jordan Bowden. 38-31 Tennessee, a 16-0 run as they come out of the break and continue to impose their will on the Boilermakers. You're watching ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Tennessee has now pushed their lead to seven, and it's really been the work of Kyle Alexander on the offensive glass. Tennessee, the more physical team to start the second half. And we see just the physicality right there. Throwing Matt Harms to the ground, Admiral Schofield with the finish. Jordan Bone getting to the rim. Nice tip in there. Tennessee coming out aggressively and setting the tone for this second half. Purdue needing to respond. They try with the drive and a good one. Laid up and in by Edwards. They needed that. And that breaks the big run that Tennessee had been on. See if they can turn it up a little defensively. It's Tennessee. The team you figure a little more athletic has really imposed their will on Purdue. They're they, just yeah. out muscling. No, they have to start the half. They came out. Must have been a heck of a halftime speech by Rick Barnes because they came out fired up. And they've dominated the glass and the physical aspect of this game. William Short, battle on the offensive glass. They had it and they just lost it as Harms controls. Edwards, good defense. How about Admiral Schofield to pick it off? He read that pass and that's just a 100% hustle play. Safety in the... Uh, defensive backfield in the NFL field and he looks like he could do yes, that. He looks like he could play linebacker. Travel will go the other way. Admiral Schofield gets off to a slow start in this game but he has responded. Take a look just making that extra effort stopping Purdue in transition. Sloppy pass there by Carson Edwards but it certainly was there. Schofield just making that play and warding off the Purdue fast break. No flow to the Purdue offense. Not at all. No. They, they've struggled in transition. They've struggled in the half court. They're going to get Schofield there with a trip. Dakota Mathias has been a guy that has knocked down shots all season. He struggled today. Just one for four from the field. Need to get him going as well. He's definitely a weapon. He's had some good looks. He just hasn't been able to knock it down. Second team foul on Tennessee. Only the first foul on Admiral Schofield today. Trying to get it low to Harms. He's got it down there, and he lost it on the way up. 
That's a good pass by Dakota Mathias, but Harms has to know as a big, you have to chin that basketball and keep it high. Those guards are coming, they're coming to strip that. He'll learn that, he's just a freshman, but good action for Purdue, just poor, poor execution. John Fulkerson, well, you get the sense they really want to see stay healthy, first yeah. of all, but they love the production that number 10 will bring. Production Purdue is bringing not great so far, trailing by five at the battle for Atlantis. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Atlantis Paradise Island, Bahamas at Heart, and Lowe. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to go to the Pacific Northwest. Remind everybody, you got the PK80 tournament set to start with 23 combined national championships. 89 combined Final Fours by the 16 teams that are out there. And this, of course, all to celebrate the 80th birthday of Phil Knight. Bunch of top 10 freshmen in 2017. ESPN 100 will be on display as well. And a terrific field. We're looking forward to seeing that PK80 start tomorrow. What a cool event. I mean, just celebrating it, a guy that really, really cool. he changed sports. And he changed the way sports are marketed, too. I think it's really cool that we're able to celebrate him and, and get a good, a really good college basketball field out of it. Harms came over to block a shot, but then the quick three is missed. You're right about that. The impact of Nike and Knight that he had on the game, and now you see other shoe companies and whatnot getting involved. Sure. But the idea that uh, so many of these schools are going to be in one place for what really amounts to two different tournaments. Right. There's yeah. two 18 brackets. There's no eventual champion overall but one from each of the eight teams in each bracket. Duke and Carolina both playing, but they're in separate brackets. Sure. And in a great venue, too. The Moda Center is big time. Well, that's for an NBA game, college basketball game. They support their teams in Portland, and it's a big basketball city. That all starts tomorrow. Purdue has uh, cranked it up a little bit on defense. Now they're going to try to turn it into some offense and cut into this Tennessee lead. In and out for Edwards. And once again, the boards dominated by Tennessee. Second half, Purdue one of six from the floor. Nobody on Purdue is shooting particularly well. No, they've been unable to get anything going in a rhythm. Finally, a good block out there by Vincent Edwards. Admiral Schofield just imposing his will on the glass. But if you're Purdue, you got to hang tough. You know, you've gotten some good looks. That last one by Vincent Edwards is in and out. You're okay with him getting that quality of a shot. Yeah. He's going to knock more of those down than he's going to miss. Schofield gets a blow, so does Fulkerson. He goes out. I think there are probably some people at home wondering if they're getting that dominated on the boards, especially on the offensive glass. Do you ever consider playing the two seven-footers at the same time? It's certainly a thought. You know, I think they haven't experimented with that a whole lot. Good steal here, by the way, and a missed layup. There's another <laughs> offensive pass. Just a great effort. I mean, Lamonte Turner, where does he come from? Flies in there. And he has been just the difference in this game. He kept Tennessee in it in the first half. He did. He and James Daniel managed to help with that one. That wall goes in and out, and we may have an injured Tennessee volunteer. It's Derek, Derek Walker. Yeah. And there's been a lid on the basket here for Purdue. Yeah. That's another good look for Vincent Edwards. That time in transition. Just rims out, will not fall. But another good look. Hold underneath the basket on Daniel. So the idea of playing them, I get they haven't done it, but you're getting hammered on the board. No, you are. I mean, Tennessee has has really gotten it done on the glass on the offensive and defensive end. Great Wide action. open. Love to see one fall, and finally it does. They set it up. Matthias found Vincent Edwards for an open three. But such a smart play by Dakota Matthias. When you have that pick and roll action, that big rolls to the rim, look opposite side. Vincent Edwards raises and he finds him for the open three. And you you have to wonder, does that get Vincent Edwards going? Take another look. Dakota Mathias comes off, the handoff. Look at the way Isaac Haas sucks in that defender. And that's the kind of thing that Matt Painter wants to see. That's that's good action. That's good offense. That's that's not a contested three. Exactly what Matt Painter wants. 
Last fouls on Nogel Eastern. You can see Purdue has definitely turned up the intensity on the defensive end. That's a tough shot off the back of the iron. And we're going to keep it here. We're going to get a foul call, what appears to be on Haas. Clearing some space for himself. And if so, that's the third foul on big Isaac Haas. Haas gets into it this time. He hits the ground, and they're going to go the other way with it. He got into a pretty good tussle with Derek Walker. And they called a foul there on Grant Williams. A little surprising. It's been a really physical game. I think both those plays could have been no calls. Yeah. You know, I think both of them, they, that's a physical rebound by Grant Williams, just as that was a physical rebound by Isaac Haas. But I guess if you're calling one, you want the refs to be consistent, and they were right there. A Bad steal pass. underneath from Bone. The layup is no good. You have to wonder, Carl, is that going to be a bucket that comes back to haunt this volunteer team? That one is called on Walker, and it may very well be one. We'll keep our eye on. Circle that at 40-36. A chance for a two-point game when it could have been a six-point advantage. Just a deflating miss. And you do a great job in your press, force Purdue into a bad pass. And you have the ball at the rim and just unable to convert. Then Carson Edwards goes their way. It, it always happens. Missed layups lead to open threes and runouts. And we saw it right there. It's just a deflating play. We will see if it does impact this game. Carson Edwards has 13 now, and Tennessee already has six fouls in this half. So we're likely to see a whole bunch more free throws than we saw in the first half. And that would certainly favor a free throw shooting team like Purdue. All these guys, it's hard to find somebody to foul. Everyone in the starting lineup, even Isaac Haas shooting 78.3% from the free throw line. And this Purdue crowd trying to will its team into this game. They find themselves just down two. Tough shot with Harms on him. Walker couldn't get it to go. And a chance for the lead or a tie. Harms did a good job there just staying straight up. Edwards in and out. And boy, he's got to feel like there's something wrong with the rim. He's had, that's his third shot that looked like it was going down and just didn't fall. Arms on Grant Williams. That's a matchup to watch down low. And Williams just hasn't been able to get it going either. He's one for six from the field. A guy coming in that's had a really good start to this season. What a finish. Terrific work, and it's been the story of this game. The offensive rebounding by Tennessee. Walker lays that in. 15th offensive rebound for the Vols. Rick Barnes talked about him. He said he, he had a great summer. That concussion really kind of derailed him. That's a great extra pass. Matthias buries it. Turned down a good shot for a better shot, and that is exactly what Carson Edwards did right there. Dakota Matthias knocks down the three, but that play was made by Carson Edwards. Under 12 to go in the second half. First of four games here at the Battle for Atlantis, and we're going to have a turnover on Tennessee. Steps are called. What a start, 42-41 as the battle for Atlantis is now underway and we are all engaged. Find itself back in this game down one and let's take a look at this Boilermaker possession. Grant Williams puts his defense at a disadvantage going for that head fake, but Carson Edwards makes the play, finding his shooter, little extra pass, swing, swing action. And we will see if that gets Dakota Mathias going. But you, know, you have to feel, Carl, this game, energy-wise, has just it's stepped up. You know, And I yeah. think you could feel it in this gym. Both teams, we're getting into that winning time area on this clock. And, and I think both teams, it's going to be a great finish. But Purdue's offense finally getting going. That Tennessee pressure has been a story, too. They yes, wanted to do that this season, and we're certainly seeing it here. Klein into the game, one of the better shooters for Purdue, even though he has not yet gotten off, and a tough fadeaway, tough, tough shot for Vincent Edwards. Schofield has given him 
issues down low, and I think that's why you haven't seen him post as much, just because Schofield is such a presence and such a specimen down there. Has not allowed Vincent Edwards to go to his post game, which is a part of his repertoire. There's a block by Harms. He has it, lost it, ball loose, and it's Purdue with a run out. See if Thompson drives the hole, and he does. And he gets it to go, and Purdue back on top. Well, P.J. Thompson, his coaches have encouraged him this season to be opportunistic in transition, and that's exactly what he was there. Gets to the rim, squares his shoulders. Great play there by P.J. Thompson. Harms' presence in that paint, too, has been a story He's changed for the game, no question. I think just, just as a rim protector, Tennessee has felt more uncomfortable getting to that rim. And that's what he brings. That's a nice little poke away. It was by Matthias. He's blocked from behind. Oh, and they're going to call yeah. a foul. Looked like it was clean, but they're going to get the foul on Lamonte Turner. Well, a nice little touch pass, touch pass there by P.J. Thompson. Hits his, a streaking Dakota Matthias like a quarterback. And I don't know if that was a foul. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a lot of ball right there. I mean, you're an offensive player, so usually you would defer to, yeah, that was a foul. When you don't you think I'm a good defender? When you sit in, <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Purdue staff who knew you said, if Robbie Hummel talks about defense, <laughs> stop the conversation. <laughs> yeah, they're probably right. I think if you ask the, the guys that I played for over the last 10 years, they'd say he's more of an offensive guy. You follow baseball. If you ever sit next to a pitcher, it's always a strike. If you sit next to a hitter, it's no always a ball. Yeah. That's two misses for Dakota Mathias. Uncharacteristic for him from the line. Harms may think that one is on him, and that's why he was all fired <laughs> up. I think they eventually called it on Vince Edwards, but Harms was... He's an emotional he guy. Is right emotional. He, he you is. You know what, though? I'd rather you be emotional than you be a dud. I think you could, he loves to play. He brings a lot of passion and energy to the game. And that's what makes college basketball great. The environments, the passion, the energy. He's going to be a good one for Purdue. He grew up in the Netherlands, and he grew up at a time when you and the rest of your team were on TV all the time. So he actually watched a lot of Purdue basketball. Yeah, and Matt Painter said he, he was incredibly knowledgeable about our program. And that's one of the reasons he ends up at Purdue. Tough drive. Arms blocked that one, but they may get a call on the big fella, and they do. And he's got to be careful. He, Like we said, he's emotional, but he's... He doesn't want to show the ref up like that. He thought he had a clean block. Arms is your general sort of European finesse player when he sure. was in high school. So his coach ultimately said, look, I get that you watch Purdue on TV a lot. You want to go play there, though, you're going to have to change your style. So he slept on it for a night, came back and said, all right, I'm all in. Flip the switch. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm un good. unbelievable, right? And they said after that day, they never had a problem with him being soft like he was. Again, you know, I mean, what an incredible transformation. And I think he's been a guy, though, that he, he can impact this Purdue program. Villanova, they're in the house. They will take on Western Kentucky. And we'll see Western Kentucky is down a few players. They have about eight players, threats, seven scholarship players. And Villanova is as good and deep as anybody in the country. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation there. For Rick Stansbury's team, they're going up against a team like Villanova, experienced and also really good. Kick by Tal will join me for that one as Matthias squares up in and out. They've had some good looks, Carl. Yep, they really have, and that's that's a good, a great play by PJ Thompson. No foul called. He misses the layup. That's when he's got to finish. James Daniel contested, but. No, he wants to have that one back. I wanted some steps, but that was not going to get called as Darrington worked the two-man game with Schofield for a while. Now he launches a three that's off the left side of the rim. Matthias gives it to Klein. Good pass. Underneath, Great pass. here's Haas. And he got fouled at the rim by Kyle Alexander. A little out of control, but the passes all worked. So a little touch pass, some volleyball action there, and rewarding their big man for running the floor. A little sloppy there on, bo on both teams' ends. But Purdue finds itself shooting two at the line. Third foul on Kyle Alexander. The two seven-footers for Purdue, each with 
three fouls as Haas makes the first. Matthias goes to the bench. Eifert comes into the game. Jordan Bowden goes to the bench for Tennessee. Good form in the free throws from Isaac Haas. Nine minutes to go. Two-point ball game. Purdue on top. Daniel, he got held. Certainly an interesting transformation for him. I mean, he is the leader no in points in Division I college basketball right now. And he hasn't been a scorer for Tennessee. I think Rick Barnes has tried to encourage him. You know, this is different. We, we have other guys that can score the basketball. We need to defend. We need to facilitate. And they got it. That's a great out-of-bounds play. I mean, that, that's just, that's Purdue falling asleep. But that's a great screen there by Tennessee. But James Daniels, a guy, you know, he has scored the ball. Yeah, and he's Graduate done it for four transfer. years. He was a Division I leading scorer in the nation when he played at Howard, averaging 27 a game. So he's had to, as you say, change his style. Big this is an pass. easy one here. He got hacked. They're going to call that on the floor. But a good interior pass to Haas, who's starting to exert himself a little bit down low. Alexander picks up his fourth. The inbound play. Nice little back screen, and Purdue just falls asleep. That's a simple back screen. That's an easy switch. And Purdue does not, not communicate. And Grant Williams finds himself at the rim. Communication is so big in college basketball. Sure. Any level. I mean, just you find guys that talk, and you can talk through a lot of things. I was fortunate enough to play with Kevin Garnett for a couple of months, and he, he's a guy that can shut down the whole side of the defense just by communicating. And it's not a hard thing to do, but you'd be surprised at how many players struggle with it. Haas had a second go in and out. There's a loose ball scrum. Haas has another chance. No foul called. And Tennessee comes up with it. Tennessee be, staying with it. Yeah. Be a lot of contact on that play. They like this matchup. Off the left hand of Haas, good call. We'll take a timeout. We're under eight with the battle for Atlantis. Purdue by one over Tennessee. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Classic American muscle. Mow with an attitude. And Atlantis Paradise Island. Bahamas at heart. Purdue finds itself leading by one. And Tennessee has upped the ante on the interior defensively, doing a good job. But we take a look. Isaac Haas catches the ball at the rim. And this is this is a play that he has to make. You know, at seven foot two with his body, with his strength. This is a play where he can catch the ball, but he's got to go up strong. He's a little off balance, and Tennessee's got the length to contest his shot. But that's one that Purdue needs. They have to score that basketball right there. Credit Tennessee for sticking with it, but. I think he'd like to have that one back. Neither team shooting particularly well. Second half, Purdue is 4 of 15, and Tennessee is 6 of 21. Right up the defense a little bit, but there have been some open shots that have been missed. Each team in this tight game, 9 assists and 12 turnovers. And I think it would be fair to say, Carl, that whoever wins that assist to turnover ratio battle, you know, whoever cannot turn the ball over and find their teammates is going to have the upper upper hand in this game. How about that hustle play by Matthias? It leads to a breakout. I think he traveled. Yep. Yeah. Edwards traveled. I thought on that show, on that uh, play you showed with Haas, he may have gotten away with shuffling. Yeah, he, he certainly took some steps. First of four games here, the battle for Atlantis. We will crown a champion on Friday afternoon. That steps there too, that extra step. And that is uh, certainly something that the officials keeping an eye on this season. 14 now turnovers for the Vols. And that's a matchup that Rick Barnes has gone to multiple times tonight, and it just hasn't 
really materialized into anything. He's turned the ball over twice now. He's a guy that, that can drive Isaac Haas. He's got that skill set, but a little uncharacteristically sloppy. Haas, one-on-one, -on -one, has a huge height advantage. Spins, gets caught, nearly lost it. Matthias there behind the back, and that was a mistake. Right into the hands of Admiral Schofield. And just on that possession, Isaac Haas caught the ball too far off the block. And, I, and Matt Painter, you know, you, almost, you, you have to throw your big man the ball, but if he's not going to post up deep, it's one of those deals where Grant Williams is strong enough to defend him. Three from the corner. That one goes for Grant Williams. He's got eight in the second half. And Tennessee up by two. Klein's gotten a lot of play and a turnover there. He hasn't made many shots at all. And the blow by. That one deflected off the Klein. It will stay with Tennessee. You've talked about how he's one of the better shooters out of Carmel, Indiana, the junior. Yeah, and he just hasn't really gotten many looks today. Nope. But for the season, he struggled. And he may be the best shooter on this Purdue basketball team. He comes out now. Harms and Vincent Edwards back in the game. What a luxury to have two seven-footers that you can rotate in and out. No doubt. And two teams here in this tournament can, can do that. Yeah. Arizona starts it. <laughs> Only seven teams in the country that can lay claim to having two seven-footers. You said later tonight we'll see DeAndre Ayton, Dusan Ustich. Chris is a guy that just doesn't get the credit he deserves because he's, he's a good player, too. Isn't he like Tyler Davis on A&M? Yeah, because no, Williams no is on the team, you forget about Tyler Davis. Yeah, and That's I mean, a lottery pick. No question. I, I think with Arizona, too, you have Alonzo Trier averaging 30. You have Raleigh Hawkins injured. So you've got a lot of guys on that team, and, and Ristic certainly does fall through the cracks. But a guy that has been a really good player for a couple years now and, and gets it done for the Wildcats. Tennessee pushes their lead to three with the two free throws. Purdue's last field goal came at the 11-minute mark, and we're at the 6.30 mark right now. They swing it to the corner. They get an open three. Instead, it's Vince Edwards, and he can't get it to go. Thompson was hiding in this uh, left corner with his arms up, but nobody saw him. Both guys open there, and it's just not been Vince Edwards' day. He has had some good looks. I think we've seen Tennessee with a concerted effort to get Grant Williams the ball. He's got 10 of Tennessee's 20 half points, or 20 second half points. And Tennessee's going right now, Carl. Yeah. Admiral Schofield got that one to go. A 7-0 run. Big possession for Purdue. They've got to get something going to the rim here. Feels that way as we're under six minutes to go in the second half. Matthias tried a ball fake, and now he launches in and out. Finally, an offensive rebound. Vincent Edwards, and it's 53-49. And he's done a better job this season getting involved on the offensive glass. Nearly a turnover. Darrington, Schofield, no. Oh. Over the back, they're going to call. That was an athletic play by Admiral Schofield. But access was denied. And the foul on Tennessee, so we'll come down the other end. Well, Tennessee's got athletes. I mean, there is no question. He comes in flying in there. I, that's one that I'd rather see them let let that go. That's not, you know, if he crashes into him and knocks somebody out of the way, I, I'm with that. But right there, no one blocks him out. And when you don't block out, you shouldn't be rewarded for for bad basketball. And that's really what just happened there. And, and you know, that's, that's a foul 94 feet from the basket. Felt like a 50-50 ball, but yeah. Schofield gets the foul. Edwards to the free throw line. And Hang one on. that actually doesn't come out. <laughs> He used the whole rim there. He's had a couple of those today. Alexander back in. He's been a force on the glass. Schofield goes to the bench. No good, but a big break as it goes off the hand of the Tennessee player. Grant Williams couldn't control it, so Purdue will have a chance now to cut into that lead, if not tie it. And they'll switch Haas and Harms. And Harms might be a little shaken up there, walking, limping back to the bench. Matthias. Nope. Loose ball. Right Tennessee's out. got a three on one. Good defense. How about Matthias to knock that away? What looked like it would have been an easy two for Tennessee. 
Dakota Mathias not quitting on the play. Long rebound run out for Tennessee. Great hands there by Mathias. Tough shot. Short and another foul on Tennessee. And Tennessee doing itself a disservice here. That's their second foul, 94 feet from the basket. Which brings you 15 feet from the basket with free throws. And with a Purdue team that's struggling to score, that's not what you, you know, you're, you're giving them points here. Boilermakers 11 of 15 from the free throw line. They are one of seven from the field here in the second half. It's been an offensive struggle for both these teams. And you just never felt like either team really got in a rhythm. You know, and we talked about the low ceiling and it's a different environment. You're down in the Bahamas. But both teams coming in, you know, Purdue is the is fifth in the nation in field goal percentage, eighth in three-point shooting. Tennessee comes in 12th in three-point shooting. They've made shots all season. It just it hasn't been that day for either team today. They're taking, they're taking a look to see who's shooting. Yeah, they're yeah. taking a look to see who's shooting. And it looks like Barnes wants to get one of his players out and get Schofield back into the game along with Jordan Bone. When you think about the potential for this Purdue basketball team, as we take a look at the review underneath, ultimately this is who will be shooting the free throws. Will it be Matthias or will it be Edwards? Yeah. It's also, a great contest. I mean, yeah. look at the way he doesn't foul. Making Jordan Bowden uncomfortable. And I, it's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> You look around, and uh, as Jay Wright will tell you, Villanova, they're not the fifth-ranked team in the country because it's so early. you got to put somebody there. A lot of people think, actually, Purdue would have been ranked higher than the 18. And then you get a game like this against Tennessee, and, and maybe the 18 feels accurate. Maybe Tennessee is yeah, perhaps right. a little and more. I think Tennessee has shown today that they're, they're certainly better than maybe people thought. Yeah. And they've played two games that aren't against the best of competition, but they handle both squads. And they've come out here today and they've competed. You know, I think that's what Rick Barnes wanted to see. He's wanted to kind of ingrain that culture of we're not going to get pushed around in the SEC anymore. We're going to be a team that imposes our will. And he has the athletes to do it at this point. I mean, you look at their team, they look the part. No doubt. They walk through the airport and you know they're a college basketball right. team. 15 points for Carson Edwards. The other thing that Purdue did this summer, they played in a World University game, yeah. which gave them a huge advantage. They're basically like a month and a half ahead of where every other team would be given the eight games they played, they lost in the championship to Lithuania. They practiced a ton. Sure, and I think they got to play against three or four or even maybe five teams that are NCAA tournament quality teams in that tournament. Got to practice all summer. It's a great drive. That is a great drive by Grant Williams, and he just takes advantage of the 7-3 center. He's got the mismatch, catches the ball on the trail, and just whips him off the dribble. Finishes at the rim. He's got 12 in the second half. Harms back in, sets the high screen. And now he's going to shoot. And that one is no good. Rebound, Edwards. Good ball fake, and he got hit underneath. And another fouled on Schofield. Well, he's asserted himself, especially in the second half, on the offensive glass. And he's probably been the best offense they've had. He's got 13 rebounds. And that's, you know, that's been really their whole offense. The free throw line keeping Purdue afloat in this second half because jump shots just have not been falling. And credit Tennessee. They've contested a lot of shots. They've, they've played hard. They've done a good job. Admiral Schofield's got four fouls on him, and perhaps we'll see Derek Walker come in and take out Schofield. And that's what we're going to see here with 439 left to go in the second half. And we're going to see Isaac Haas come back in too. Certainly the size advantage over Derek Walker. By no means is he small, but everybody's small next to Isaac Haas. Edwards gets it to go, a one-point ball game. Pressure applied in the backcourt from Edwards on Jordan Bone.
Lamonte Turner's been a little quiet. We haven't, haven't called his name in a while. Yes, it rattles in for a moan. And a sophomore out of Nashville, Tennessee gives him a four-point lead. Yeah, Lamonte Turner turned it on to end the first half. A little quiet here in the second. Haas down low, went for the big dunk. And he got blocked by Walker from behind. Two-hand yeah, flush would have been a little more effective. That's, that's a great post-up, first of all. I mean, he did his work early. He sealed him. Physically dominated Derek Walker. But that's a two-hand dunk right there. That's got to be one where you, you get an A-one. And he cocks it back. Tonight's post-up, but at this point in the game, really at any part in the game, you got to finish that. But boy, it would have looked good. <laughs> it would have looked cool, no doubt. <laughs> Rattles in the first one. He's done a nice job from the free throw line. And he gets that one to go as well. So Purdue. And it'll be interesting to see. He's got a matchup, I think, the coach that Matt Painter likes. And I think they feel like they can post Derek Walker and get him going to the rim. We'll see if that's how they choose to finish this game. They're within two, five and six from the free throw line is Haas as he comes way out to guard Bone who fades away from the free throw line. No good, and here's Purdue now with a chance to tie or go ahead. Edwards wants it, and he took steps. That little bonus step gets you every time. 58-56 on their 16th turnover. I want to remind everybody as we are here on Paradise Island. The guys and girls from First Take will be on Thanksgiving morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. All the NFL games, three of them, they'll preview the college football weekend rivalry games and some tricky day surprises, as you would expect from those guys. Max, Stephen A., First Take, streams live on the ESPN app. Back with Robbie Hummel, Carl Ravitch. Good game here, Tennessee by two over Purdue. It hasn't been a pretty game, but it's a close one. Second half, think about Purdue, they have made five of 20 from the floor. They have also made 13 free throws, so they've scored most of their points from the stripe to keep this game tight. Down the stretch, I expect to see a healthy dosage of Grant Williams. Pretty good defense there by Purdue. Forced him into rotation, but able to recover. 10 on the shot clock as Bones settles things down. Oh, pick and pop action. There's your guy Williams. No good. Rebound. It's grabbed by Harms, who's in the game as Haas sits. Pretty good shot there for Tennessee. Yeah. Just didn't knock it down. I think if you're Purdue, you're going to Benson Edwards. Schofield with four fouls. Buried the three and a big shot there from Carson Edwards. Well, Vincent Edwards gets into that paint and sucks that volunteer defense with him. And Carson Edwards just steps into that three. A fearless player. He's I mean, got he, he has no fear. They lead by one. Harms one on one. Nope. He brought his arm down. Yeah. He looks like he's banged up again. This time his left hip as he's on the ground and in some pain yeah grant williams just physically he lowered his shoulder you gotta hope that, that matt harms is okay third time that he's hit that floor hard yeah he's he's gotten physically punished today yeah. you look at his eye you look at and he's, uh, he's actually a lot bigger than he was when he got to Purdue. Yeah, he's gained 25 pounds, and, and he's going to learn here. There is no need to swipe down. I'm 7'3". Yeah. You know, I have position. I'm, I'm going against an undersized four-man. And for whatever reason, he thought he needed to block his shot there. And, and really, and as a big guy, all the time, you just need to get big. When you're seven foot three, you've got this wingspan. Put your arms up. The one looks like a man, the other one looks yeah. like a, a man that's growing. Yeah, and, and Purdue's strength and conditioning program is going to get him to that point. But he just needs to go straight up. He's got that size advantage. There is no need to swipe down at that basketball. Yeah, he's got a black eye, and now he's got a bruised left hip. Yeah. And the free throw from Williams is good to tie this one up at 59. Alexander subbing back in to counter this Boilermaker size. Williams strokes it. 
Tennessee by one as you keep looking at harm. She's trying to keep that hip loose. Yeah, he's hurt. Good defense, but Edwards controls it. Matthias, Haas down low. Where's he going with it? Yeah, he lost it, but they're going to get a foul on Williams. And he says, I was looking at Thompson out here, open for a three. That was a good catch by him. I mean, he, he posted strong, and he went and got that basketball. Tennessee swarming defense, as they have been all day. But a strong move there by Isaac Haas, and he, he certainly got fouled. Keep that ball above your head? Yeah, keep it up there. Don't let those guards come in and take that from you. Very good so far from the line. Five and six, now six and seven from the... And we've seen today... Isaac Haas has some issues of just bringing the basketball down. He's a guy at 7-2. There is no need for that. He, he keeps keep it high, keep it away from those guards. Had a bit of a tough day, but what knocks him doing, down there. It also looks like they're basically subbing in harms to play defense. And yeah, Haas it's to an play offense, offense for defense, such, yeah. you know, substitution there. And, and Isaac has done a good job on the offensive end in terms of kind of just posting strong. And we saw him, you know, he's... Had some issues, but I think on the offensive end, he's been better than Matt Harms. Yes. And he's made free throws. And he's made some free throws when he's gotten fouled, yes. Defense! 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 Harms has four fouls now, as you see him. And Williams will try to go to work on him. See if he goes straight up with his arms. He did that time. Tough shot, in and out. And a good rebound by Harms. And, and you're exactly right. He went straight up, made Graham Williams score over him. And with his length and size, tough for a guy like Grant to score that basketball. Yeah, Harms did his job. He's coming out of the game now. And Haas is going to come in. So you certainly see the way that Matt Painter is using his two seven-footers. Not sure how Harms is going to sleep tonight. <laughs> but if <laughs> they get a win, it'll feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And that size, ultimately, I mean, this, this was, at the beginning, the size and strength of Purdue against the athleticism of Tennessee. Yeah. It, it's too close, obviously, to think that it's going to tip in the scales. Of, right. But you see what Purdue's trying to do. No, I think so. Tennessee. And I, I think for Purdue, we're going to see a heavy dose of Vince Edwards. I think you've seen him, that even with Schofield, he is, has posted up and he's he's felt like he's had an advantage there. We saw him get into the paint, drive the basketball, find Carson Edwards. If you're Tennessee, I think Grant Williams is that guy. You know, if he's going to have a Matt Harms or an Isaac Haas guarding him, that's a guy that you feel like you have an advantage. And it hasn't been great for them today going to that but I think going into the final minutes he, he was a guy last year that for this Tennessee team scored a lot of points and when they lost Robert Hubs he was that guy yeah tough inbounds play on the baseline yeah, that's gonna be a tough little bounds. location there for them to inbounds this basketball but Williams also set a Tennessee record for blocks by a freshman last year with 61 they got a lot of shooters on the floor now as well Right, so we got a minute 42 to play in this one. Double double for Vince Edwards. He's been a man on the glass. Maybe not made all the shots today. Matthias and Haas were in a two man he's, he's game. Injured. Yeah, Schofield is doubled over. Shot is up. And Schofield is looking at Rick Barnes, and they're going to call a whistle here. It looked like he jammed his shoulder yeah, or something. Yeah, I think elbow. So. If you're Purdue, that's not a good shot. You've got a man that, that can't defend. You, you're five on four, and you take a contested pull-up. you got to find that open man. Let's hope this isn't serious, because Admiral Schofield is an important part of this Tennessee team. And just kind of gets jammed up there by Isaac Haas. Mm. And it is, he's grabbing that shoulder. That's, that's tough. Big possession here for Tennessee. Harms back in the game on the defensive end for Purdue. And now it's Edwards on Williams. Haas, Harms on Alexander. High screen, long three. In and out, rebound Matthias. And Purdue under a minute now with a one-point lead in the ball. Well, Levante Turner got a good look. Just rims out, a little pick and roll action. Made those all day. And Tennessee, and they've really been stifled on this offensive glass. They haven't been able to get the second chance opportunities. That's a big time screen. In and out. 
And a rebound for Tennessee. Edwards had the shot they wanted, and they couldn't get it to go. So we'll cross the timeline and call a timeout. Schofield continues to have his shoulder worked on just outside the bench area for Tennessee, and you can see the pain that he's in, and that's, yeah. that's a big fella, and that's some serious pain. He ran into Isaac Haas. Two so, huge bodies colliding. I mean, you think about that. That's, that's a lot of force right there. All right, you got 30 seconds left. You got 24 on the shot clock. And we just saw a good shot for Lamonte Turner go yeah. in and out. You want to go inside, try to get foul uh, on Harms, get yeah. him out of the game? I mean, to me, I think it's got to be Grant Williams. He's been the guy for them in the second half here, and he's really carried them. So I think you're going to see them. He'll have a matchup that I feel like Tennessee thinks is favorable, whether that's with Matt Harms guarding him or Vincent Edwards. He's been their guy in the second half. I'd like to see an ISO, whether that's on the perimeter of its arms or in the post of its Edwards. Bowden will inbounds the ball. He hasn't taken a lot of shots, but he is a good shooter for them. And had been particularly hot coming into this game. Last Tennessee field goal came with the 423 mark. They're 0 for their last five. They go right to Williams. Tough shot. Can't get it to go. Matthias has come up big on the glass. And a foul in the backcourt. Boy, the in and outs oh, for both teams have been a story today. But you know what? That, that's a great play by Tennessee. And, and they don't get anything out of it. But they went to Grant Williams in the mid post. And, and we talked about this coming out of the timeout. He's got that size advantage. Vincent Edwards did a good job not fouling. But. Man, he's got the ball at the rim, and it's just, we've seen it up for both teams here in the second half. Almost like there's a lid on that rim, it just rolls off. Purdue going to try to make this a three-point game at the free throw line. Matthias has six rebounds. Edwards' first free throw. Iron kind. Yes, sir. 20 points now for Carson Edwards to go with the five rebounds. Three-point game. Tennessee does not need a three here. You get something going to the rim. Plenty of time left in this game, but they got to do it quickly. Now you got to get a three. Lamonte Turner has Edwards on him. He launches. It's good, and we're tied with five seconds to go. Timeout, Purdue. And he's been that guy that's really kept them afloat from the perimeter. Just comes off that screen, and Purdue a little back. You, you, you lead by three, you have to be up on him. But no fear from Lamonte Turner. Tennessee, nice little action, dribble handoff. Comes back off the screen and they just kind of fall asleep on the switch. Make him shoot a two at that point. Good job by Grant Williams. Watch him eliminate Thompson, then he eliminates yeah. Edwards. No, and that's just a smart play. It's a legal good play there by Grant Williams. Schofield there, his shoulder looks a little tight. That's not a good sign. No, it's not. Admiral Schofield ran into Isaac Haas, grabbed that left shoulder. They've been trying to elevate it, and obviously he's still dealing with a whole heck of a lot of pain if this game goes to overtime, not having Schofield on the floor, especially on the uh, glass and defensively could very well be a story. But we're tied after that huge three from Lamonte Turner. Well, the good news for Purdue is you have a guy like Carson Edwards who in this full court situation, you know, you can get him ahead of steam and he can either get to the rim or get to his pull-up game. I think if you're Matt Painter, you feel really confident and really comfortable getting him the basketball and saying, Carson, go make a play for us, go win this game. Who knows where these teams are in March, but the idea that uh, you could make the case this is as competitive a field for a November tournament May have evidence here yeah. with Tennessee and playing. I, I like this so Tennessee well. team. You know, they've they've competed. They've been athletic. They've they've really played at a high level. And right, here's Edwards with four, three, two launches. No front of the iron. It was right on line. It did look good. But we'll go to overtime. Right on line. That yeah. shot was for Carson Edwards. You know what? That's exactly the shot that Matt Painter wanted. That is what he does. How about Lamonte Turner? How about the bench scoring for Tennessee, which has been so one-sided today, and Lamonte Turner has been a big part of it. 
No, he certainly has, and he's done a great job here for this volunteer team. And we see Carson Edwards just short. And we saw it. It was right on line, unable to knock it down. It's a five-minute basketball game now, Carl. No doubt. Robbie Turner's got 17 points off the bench. They've outscored him 23-4 off the bench as well. And now you do wonder about the Schofield injury and yeah. the impact that'll have on the overtime period. Fouls, you got Harms, who's got four, and there are three with four for Tennessee. Yeah, no, I think both teams have some issues there, whether it's foul trouble or injuries. But, uh, you know, Rick Barnes talked about this. He likes his depth. So they have guys that he's comfortable putting in this game that he trusts. That's a good sign. Looked like Schofield looked at yeah, uh, one, one of the, the coaches huddle, definitely. and said, yep, I'm good. Yeah, maybe just a stinger. Those are painful. You see it in the NFL a lot. Those guys get jammed in the shoulder, hurt for a little bit, and you're right back there. So what a start to the battle for Atlantis, and this is the first of four games. Watch the monitors. Lost the power here temporarily, but now we're back up. So, yeah, Villanova coming up against Western Kentucky, and Jay Wright's team could be poised for another championship run. Arizona, the number two team in the country with Alonzo Trier, who's uh, averaging 30 a game. They also sit there and have DeAndre Ayton. They don't have Raleigh Alkins, although he's here, and he's starting to look like yeah, he could be it, back it, in December. Yeah, practice yesterday. He was moving around, doing some things with the team. Certainly a, a great sign if you're a Wildcat fan. You have to wonder, as we tip off this overtime, does Purdue's experience come into play here? I mean, you look at the guys that are on the court for this Tennessee team. A lot of them sophomores. See Purdue, a lot of them seniors. We'll see if that makes any difference here as we tip off overtime. Williams, Alexander, Schofield. I'll have four fouls for Tennessee. They like this matchup here in the post. Williams got Frank his man up in the air. Haas meet him at the rim. Good offensive rebound, and it goes for Williams. Haas oh, did a good job. Yes, he did. He was straight up, but... Grant Williams sticking with it. He puts his Tennessee Volunteer team up too. 16 now for Williams. Matthias, tough three. Got it to go. He was drifting to his left and still made it. That's a big time play call by Matt Painter right there. I mean, that is a set play. Drives the baseline, screen for Matthias. And they got him coming back off the screen. Good Great hands, hands. Matthias, and he's got a breakout. Bowden's there, and he doesn't get a foul call, but Matthias now with five quickies, and the lead for Purdue grows to three. And that's your senior leader making plays, making shots, getting stops on the defensive end. Schofield, oh, Carson Another Edwards. steal, Bowen looked like he may have turned an ankle. Edwards, oh, met at the rim, but it's Matthias who picks up the offensive rebound. No foul called, he's got the last seven, and Purdue's got a five-point lead. We talked about experience making a difference. Carson Edwards going to boom this one on these Tennessee Volunteers. Met the rim, and Matthias just following up the play. Dakota Mathias has got the last seven, including this three. On the other end, Bowen has come out of the game. He looked like he had turned his ankle. So he's out, and both coaches are fired up here about the lack of calls. I think they, Barnes wanted yeah, one on Bowen. No, I think you're right. And Painter certainly wanted one on Mathias. They've let him play here in overtime. And Dakota Mathias making plays. At both ends of the floor. We're in overtime, 325 to go. Barnes wants a call there, and he's not going to get it on Carson Edwards, making life hard on James Daniel. Alexander, rare three. <laughs> he knocks it down. Certainly not what he's known for, but steps into that with confidence and knocks it down. The 6'11", 220 yeah. pounder launching a three. That was a big one. Today. I don't think he's taken one on the season. 
Schofield dives and misses it. Vince Edwards, as Schofield continues to flop on the floor. Thompson, he buries a three. You know what? That's what P.J. Thompson does. And last year in the NCAA tournament against Iowa State, whether it was the big three he made against them or the two free throws to seal the game, that's your senior leader, your point guard, knocking down the open jumper. What a difference the overtime has been for the effectiveness of the shooting from Purdue given yeah. what they did in the second half. Finally in a rhythm, making some jump shots, what they are known for. Big trip for Tennessee. Huge trip. See if Daniel, who once led the country in scoring, starts to go back into that scoring mode. They like that mid-post action for Williams. Great pass. Schofield too much. Offensive rebound, no. Second chance, yes, as Haas was on the floor. Williams to gets it to go. He's stuck with that one again. Oh, we got a wet basketball yeah, out there. Did. Tennessee has found something they like with Grant Williams there at that at that mid post, and they they've really gotten whatever they wanted. You know, they've gotten open shots at the rim, they've gotten threes. They're going to keep going back to that because that that is definitely working for this volunteer squad. Williams got them all after halftime, 18 of them. Haas wants it down low. Edwards launches a three. It was contested. He misses. Contest, yes. And Schofield rips it away from his own teammate, Lamonte Turner. James Daniel just getting a hand in Carson Edwards' face. Makes such a difference, Carl. The difference in a contested shot and an open shot. It is, it is night and day. Williams one-on-one -on -one with Edwards. Bats him down. Loses it on the way up. Regains it, still battles, gets it to go. Tenacity. <laughs> I mean, just physically punishing Purdue. And he's a guy, he's undersized, but man, he's strong. And when he gets it in that mid post, he's effective. Grant Williams, the score is 73 72. We haven't updated it yet. The Tennessee's bench wanted an over and back, but. Score not working. Certainly knock that ball into the backcourt, and they're going to get Isaac Haas for steps. It's interesting. Haas has played the entire overtime. Harms now comes in, but late in the regulation, it was Harms who was on the floor. Yeah, and they, they were kind of doing an offense for defense substitution, and I think Matt Painter liked the way his team was playing. He felt they were in an offensive flow there to start overtime. Left Haas in, and... Now we see he's going to go with Harms, more of a defensive presence. One minute to go. Looks like we're going to get a timeout call by Rick Barnes and Tennessee. So a one-point game, Purdue leading 73-72. It's kind of been the Matthias and Grant Williams show in overtime. No, it has, and I think Matthias has been a guy. He's He's been dominant for Purdue. I mean, he's made plays on both ends of the floor. He's knocked down jumpers. He's done a little bit of everything. He's made winning plays. And when you're a guy that's been through it, you've played, you're, you're a senior, and you know what it takes to win, especially against good teams, and he's done an incredibly good job of just doing that. You know, he has been in the right position. He's made shots. He's done a little bit of everything for this Purdue team. He's having a terrific senior season. Yeah, and no, he shot the basketball incredibly he's well. He, he's been, you know, he just knows how to play. I mean, that's the thing about him is he's been a guy that, that he can do a little bit of everything. He can facilitate, he can make shots. Defensively, he's one of the best defenders in the Big Ten Conference. He's off to a great start in this young season. 15 points. He's got uh, eight rebounds, a handful of assists. As you can see, they're working on that ankle of the point guard, Jordan Bone. Turnover led to a wild sequence, which ultimately ended up with Matthias laying it up and laying it in. Matthias averaging a 17 coming into this game. Edwards 18, Vince Edwards 15. Those three guys again have been the primary scorers with Carson 21, Vince 11, now Matthias 15 in the game.
And Purdue's just really gotten it done at the free throw line. Yeah. You know, I think we've seen that today. When their offense has struggled, they've been able to get fouled. Some of those coming 94 feet from the hoop. They've gotten to the line 25 times. Tennessee just 10 attempts. And that's really that really kept them in it a lot of that second half. Okay, Carson Edwards and Isaac Haas combined from the free throw line are 16 for 17. They've missed one between them. Edwards is nine for nine. And what a luxury for your 7-2 center to do that. Right. I mean, how many guys that you see with that kind of size, you, you know, whether it's NBA, college, whatever, you see the hacky shack almost employed and with this team. Isaac Haas makes his free throws, so it's just something that you cannot do. You can leave him on the floor at the end of the game. Purdue by one. Bone, the point guard, not playing with a bad ankle. Again, they get it low to Williams. They had a trap set up. Harms squeezes him there, but he leaves Alexander wide open. And Purdue switched that ball screen. Left P.J. Thompson in the post, and they just fall asleep on the rotation. They go to double team, and no one's there. Six zero run. Tennessee now back on top by one. You look at the different lineups too. a senior laden Purdue team and this is a pretty young Tennessee team who is playing with poise here. Lately. They have no and we saw it right there. Purdue goes to double team and, and Carson Edwards just completely falls asleep on the back side. But Tennessee has done a good job. You know a lot of the times in college basketball youth struggles at the end of the game and we have not seen that tonight. These fresh or these sophomores now freshmen last year played in a ton of big games in the SEC conference. Yeah. And their season. So the SEC and you're older and they're and they're you're better. How about the SEC this year? And that is a monster right there. <laughs> you're learning the teams right there. You got Kentucky, A and M, Alabama, Alabama's improved. Auburn, Tennessee, Florida, Florida. They're, Tennessee's defense. Yeah. It's one thing Rick Barnes wanted to see improve this year. It has been very good today. He says we're better than at any point we were last season. And now they're Going to rely on that defense up by one in overtime with 40 seconds to play. They're going to go inside. That's Haas. a big time post up though. That is right at the rim call. That is exactly what Matt Painter drew up. We're bigger than you. We're going to impose our will. And that's exactly what they just did. And if you're Matt Painter, that's the that's the best possession you've seen from Isaac Haas all night. On balance, strong, really good stuff there from another senior. Uses its last timeout. Purdue has no timeouts. We got 27 seconds to go. Harms and Haas continue to communicate. But look at where he's posting. He is on that block and he keeps his balance and he finishes with his body going to the rim. There's nobody on this floor that can check him physically. And right there he he imposed his will. 13 points now in the game for Isaac Haas. Uh, Hoax Bluff, Alabama, 7-2, 290. Played a really good game against Marquette. Had 22 in that game on the road. This was a Purdue team that also beat Fairfield early this year with like 19 three-pointers in that game. They got 10 three-pointers today. All right, so you're Tennessee. What's the game plan now? Back to it's Grant Williams. Back to Grant Williams. I'm going to Grant Williams, and I'm getting him in the post. I think you, you've seen him post at that elbow. You've seen him post at the top of the key. But good things have happened for this Tennessee squad when they've gotten him the basketball. He's been able to back Vincent Edwards down. It, it's been for himself. It's been for others. He's had a great second half, a very good overtime. I would go right back to that. 20 points on 7 of 17 shooting for Williams. Eight boards. Four second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sophia looking for somebody to throw it into, and it's Alexander who will hand it to Lamonte Turner. Turner had that big three at the end of regulation, send it into overtime. Yep, here it is. He's going to back him down. Good move and an easy layup. No answer for Grant Williams. None. They go back on top. And now we're at 10. Now Painter going to let him play. Free throw jumper. Short. Rebound. Fought for. Tennessee gets it. And they get fouled. Good hustle in the corner by Admiral Schofield. Great hustle by Admiral Schofield. And that, you know, he went and got that basketball. He wanted it more. 
And we see the ball is knocked loose. Two players go for it. The Admiral comes up with it. Really hurt his shoulder at the end of regulation. Didn't know if he was going to come back. And there he is making a key play. And now with two seconds to go, Tennessee with a chance to go up three. Free throw good. How about these volunteers? Schofield pounds the floor. Well, it hasn't been pretty, but they've stuck with it all day. And I don't think Rick Barnes wants it to be pretty. I, want, I think he wants this team to be gritty. He wants them to get after guys defensively. And Remember, this is a 26-foot ceiling, so a long three-point shot, if that's what they have to do, is going to be pass. a very difficult yeah. proposition. The ceiling is low here in this ballroom, and here comes that pass. And it's intercepted, and Tennessee is going to win it. Well, just a great win for Tennessee. I mean, a resume-building win for this volunteer squad. And they came in here today, and they matched Purdue's physicality. Oh, wow. They may be calling a traveling violation here. I'm not sure how much time they're going to have on the clock, but they're going to look at it. That ball was inbounded. Yeah, this would advance was... that basketball down yep. into the front court. Question is, is there going to be enough time to even get a shot off when they do this review? But you also keep in mind with Purdue's size, you can throw that ball to the rim and tip it in. Three-point game, though. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You, I see. So you want the tip on the foul. Tip and one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> How about the story, though, down the stretch of Grant Williams, too, is this play being reviewed? And we'll show it to you. Well, Tennessee, I, I, they, Rick Barnes, you got to give him credit. He saw that he had an advantage, and they had a mismatch physically, and he, and yeah, he does travel. He does, but there's like uh, maybe point seven. Yeah. That's enough time to get a shot off, though. So he holds it for a little while, and then there's that step. I imagine around point seven seconds. That would be my guess as well. Grant Williams, a story on one end, and now you're going to have a, a chance for a catch and shoot on the other end for Purdue. And really a good job by the officiating crew to not just have that game be called over. Sure. Alexander went up and got it. And watch him hold it. And when that foot moves, not that one, yeah, that there, one. That's the one. About point eight, point seven. Yeah. Mike Roberts, Darren George, and Clarence Armstrong, the officiating crew, as they discuss this. And I think if you're Matt Painter right here, oh, you, they're going to call the game over. Oh, wow. They called the game over on what appeared to be a travel with about point seven, eight, yeah, point seven point eight seconds. Or eight tenths of a second left. Unless they decided that perhaps, uh, well, even so, you could still, as you say, get the tip in and a foul. But I sure. imagine they imagine Tennessee wouldn't wouldn't uh, try on defense if there was no chance to catch the ball right. and shoot it. The clock starts running right away, and Kyle Alexander walks with it about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 seconds. So, yeah. It, Grant Williams walks off. Tennessee a winner. 22 points. All of them coming after the half. Eight of them coming in overtime as he is our player of the game. And that's brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Interesting end. Great game. Robbie, a lot of fun. We will continue with our battle for Atlantis. Our final score, 78-75. We'll be back with Villanova and Western Kentucky 20 minutes from now. Now to Adnan of the studio.